Fujifilm just announced that they're getting into the cinema business, and they're going to be doing it with a medium format sensor. Is it their intention to displace IMAX with a cinema version of the GFX100? Well, we've got the answers and specifications, but before we get to the details, please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, helps this channel grow, and keeps you up to date on the latest camera coverage. A medium format sensor is 48 millimeters by 36 millimeters, while an IMAX sensor is 70.4 millimeters by 52.6 millimeters. So while not as large as an IMAX sensor, a medium format sensor is about four times larger than a traditional Super 35 sensor and almost twice as large as a full frame sensor. So why are we talking about sensor sizes? Isn't that whole argument about APS-C versus Micro Four Thirds versus full frame sensors kind of put to rest? Well, not exactly, especially when it comes to filmmaking because with a larger sensor, what that means is you're able to capture more detail. And with more detail, especially when you project it up onto a really large screen, you're able to create a more immersive, lifelike experience. The Fujifilm GFX Eterna presents a potential alternative to traditional IMAX cameras. While the GFX Eterna may not match the ultra-high detail of IMAX, the GFX 102 sensor offers approximately four times the information as Super 35 and 1.7 times the information of full-frame sensors. And when you consider the large size of IMAX cameras, the noise that they create and the cost, the GFX Eterna could very well appeal to filmmakers seeking to produce high quality visual aesthetics in a digital format without requiring the same level of raw resolution found in IMAX cameras. IMAX started off in 1967 with the first theater opening in Toronto in 1971. The focus of these earlier movies was on documentaries, providing the viewer with an immersive experience. And keep in mind, this is back in time when a lot of people were still using black and white televisions, where your average color television wasn't more than about 20 or 22 inches. In fact, I still recall back in, what was it, um, the late 80s, early 90s, when my brother got a 26-inch television, that was considered big. But going back to IMAX, one of the common documentaries that was shown in those early days was a flyover of a volcano generating oohs and ahs. Big budget Hollywood movies didn't come until several decades later, and that's mainly because of the cost and difficulty with shooting with IMAX cameras. The cameras are known for being very loud, very expensive, and requiring specially designed theaters to take advantage of that high resolution. And did you know that most IMAX movies actually incorporate using standard cinema cameras and the reason being is, well, you can only shoot for a certain amount of time and they're very loud and they also don't work in confined spaces. But they do it such a good job of putting these movies together that you just can't tell. They use the IMAX camera for those, for those immersive environments where you've got complete freedom over your space. But now imagine that you're able to produce a big budget Hollywood movie without the inconvenience or the cost a medium format sensor, while having a slightly lower resolution than IMAX cameras, would still provide four times the resolution of a Super 35 camera, providing a fully immersive environment for a fraction of the cost. And to fully take advantage of the resolution provided by IMAX, you need those large theaters, with many IMAX movies actually being shown in smaller theaters. And in these smaller theaters, would a film shot on a GFX Eterna be distinguishable from a film shot with IMAX cameras? Well, IMAX disagrees, but only time will tell. If a GFX Eterna can deliver the same quality without the large size cameras and noise generated by IMAX cameras, the large investment and requiring larger theaters, it could become the standard for shooting high resolution films. Just because IMAX is a better quality product offering a higher resolution, more immersive environment, it doesn't mean that it's going to survive. Just look at what happened between Betamax and VHS. While the technology in the GFX Eterna could potentially be a flop, I'm getting a sense that this is gonna send ripples through the industry. I mean, just look at the size of this camera. 
it's small. And again, right up against an IMAX camera, the difference is huge. But now let's turn our attention to these specifications and they're not leaked specifications. These are specifications coming directly from Fujifilm themselves. But just keep in mind that this camera is still in development. And while the technology could be a flop, it's certainly possible. I get a sense that the GFX Eterna is a bit of a turning point and that it's gonna send ripples through the industry. But now let's turn our attention to the specifications of this camera. That's still in development. It will have the same sensor and processor found in the GFX 102, the same rolling shutter. It's gonna have internal ND filters, but it's small, very small. Compare this to the size of an IMAX camera. Just look at that thing. Can't imagine you'd be tired after shooting all day with that thing. And that's it for specifications because, well, Fujifilm isn't finished developing it yet. We don't even know the codex and many other capabilities of the camera. But rest assured, Fujifilm said it will come out sometime in 2025. They're still tweaking the camera. They're still getting it ready. So despite the splash, splash page put out by B&H, um, I don't think you're going to be able to pre-order this camera anytime soon. But it is exciting. And if it does change to a pre-order, I'll go ahead and let you know. But anyhow, the link to the splash page, I've gone ahead and put it in the description down below um, or right here. It's only for b &H at this point. I checked Adorama at the time of filming and it's nowhere to be seen. However, if you're not into full frame cinema cameras with a medium format sensor, then you might want to take a look at all of the sales that are going on right now. And there's a lot of them. Now, the Canon EOS R5C is currently $33.99. $33 That's over $1,000 off its release price. And it's not the only camera on sale. The R5, $27.99. And it's not just these high-end cameras, all the way down to the R100, the R50, and taking a look over at Nikon. We're seeing so many sales on so many cameras. And would you believe it? Even Sony is getting in on the action. We're seeing sales across the board. So if you're interested in buying a camera or a lens, then you really want to take a look at what's going on right now. Even storage is going on sale. And with two weeks before Black Friday, um, you know, I got to be honest with you, in many years gone by, such as 2021 and 2022, we didn't see a lot of big deals leading up to Black Friday or on Black Friday. But what we're seeing here today um, some really great deals. You might not even want to wait till Black Friday, but what I would do, um, check out B&H and Adorama, check out their purchasing policies. And if they have a return policy of, let's say, 30 days, well, you can go ahead and buy today's camera at that price. And then if it drops, you call them up and say, hey, look, instead of returning this, can you just give me a difference in the price and you know, lock in your price today and get your camera today or your lens? I'm really excited about 2024. We're seeing so many really incredible deals going on. And, um, you know, don't worry about that fear of missing out. I know we've got a new camera coming on November the 19th. It's a Sony and it's the A1 II. Um, maybe we'll get a sale on the A1 right now, but nothing so far. Although in Europe, it's dropped by about 500 euros. But as of, again, the time of filming this video, I haven't seen a price on the A1 II. Sony, come on, come on, come on. We know you're going to drop the price. Why make people wait to the last minute? Come on. Just show us a little bit of love. Anyhow, uh, if you're interested in pre-ordering um, or purchasing any of the cameras I've talked about, then please consider using my affiliate links in the description down below, these guys right here, because honestly, what you're doing is you're helping keep the lights on. You're keeping this channel going. I don't believe in using any 30 second or 60 second spots at the beginning of this video. And I gotta tell you, I just got another email today saying, hey, look, we got this program open with Skillshare. Would you be interested? And I do think Skillshare is a useful platform. And no, this is not a paid ad. I think it's useful. But to actually take 60 seconds of the first part of the video where most people click, choose to click off or not, or to watch, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because I think it really creates a, um, well, it's annoying, especially if you pay, you're paying YouTube a certain fee every month to avoid ads. So because of the affiliate links and pre-order links, I'm able to talk about this at the very end of the video you're able to purchase something at a great price and at no cost to you, I get a small commission or fee back. It's the best of both worlds. You don't have to fill out any forms, put in any codes, just use the links down below to Adorama b &H or amazon.com and um, you're helping support this channel. But that being said, 
don't be afraid to reach out to your local camera store. Patrick at Downtown Camera in Toronto has served me well wherever I am in Canada, so I appreciate that. And uh, also your local camera store, if they provide you with excellent customer experience, reward them by buying from them. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great week, and we'll see you again soon. I suspect very soon.